channel MSNBC and the Democratic Party. And then we will produce the historical uh, news reports uh, compiling all the historical facts to absolutely create uh, the truthful weapon system to try to counter their history of unmitigated uh, racial division and sectarian balkanization in this country. Now, when you look at the Ed Schultz uh, news piece that we just played part of, everything he says is formulaic. The part-time news host, a guy that has a show on the weekend on Fox News that has more viewers than the top three MSNBC shows combined. And the guy who heads up a huge alternative real news site that has more viewers than MSNBC.com does. You can look it up. Daily Caller has more visitors. So do we. By many times. On Alexa.com and other metrics. He's just a part-time news host. And he teams up with a 9-11 truther. That's meant to say, hey, Tucker Carlson shouldn't be hanging around with this super hardcore liberal Alex Jones. No, I, I question the official story of 9-11. I question arming Al-Qaeda to attack Syria. I know they're letting these groups attack us bare minimum to take our liberties. And Tucker Carlson, in an upcoming interview, we haven't aired yet, it'll air Friday, the, the in-studio interview. It's going to be a special production because I'm going to add clips to it, backing up everything I say. He said, no, it, they have used 9-11 to take our liberties and to enslave us. No one can deny it. That's what I'm saying. Don't let them use terror to take our liberties. Don't let them use the Gulf of Tonkin back to LBJ to get us in the Vietnam War. Do, they let crises destroy our liberty, regardless of whether they're real, manufactured, provocateur, whether they opened the door, did the whole thing, regardless it was used. And so every time they attack me on MSNBC or Raw Story or Media Matters, they say 9-11 truther as if that's something to demonize, and then they connect it to the Republican Party. When I'm not about the Republican Party, I'm about opposition. If the Republican Party was taking over and doing all this, I would support any opposition to it. I didn't like stuff Bush was doing. and was a giant critic. The Democratic Party, though, is a nasty organization at the top. They have a lot of nice people in it. And folks, they're Democrats because their granddaddy was a Democrat. And a lot of the biggest redneck, right-wing People I know, and quite frankly, some of the few racists I know, are Democrats, folks. Growing up and currently, they're the kind of guys that'll make little comments and stuff. The only people I've ever heard that are white that have made racial comments are Democrats. I can say that unequivocally. And that's well known to anybody that actually studies politics. And that is what is so frustrating about all this. Then they say, oh, you're racist Republicans if you don't let 30 million more illegals be legal and bring their families in, which signs our death warrant to the whole world, just come here. And then once you get here, you get free welfare, can have your babies for free. That's the incentive to come here and go with the Democrats and Republican leadership that's for it as well, because they work for the same globalist. I mean, that is suicide. Imagine if Mexico said, come here, everything's free. You would have hundreds of millions of people doing everything they could to buy a plane ticket to come to Mexico. Mexico has their most draconian immigration laws in our hemisphere. Well, in the Americas, to be technical. From all the way from Chile up to Alaska, right through Canada, folks, there no one has immigration laws as strong as Mexico. Look it up. It's on record. Immigration laws, guys, search... Mexico has toughest immigration laws in the Americas. It'll be a university paper, guaranteed. Mexico has the toughest, or, or New York Times headline, Mexico has shameful immigration pass as well, like America does when we're the most wide open country. This is political suicide, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to bring in an unlimited group of people to take our guns, you name it. But, but, but getting, back, getting back to Tucker Carlson and... The attack on he and I working together, just in a friendly way, him coming on air. They want to dictate who can go on whose show. Most of the time when MSNBC or Media Matters attacks, it's like, um, a Republican congressman come on Alex Jones's show. Oh, Ted Cruz came on. Oh, Rand Paul did. Oh, Ron Paul did. Don't talk to that kook. They don't want 
what they see the radicalization of a hardcore liberal like myself and Thomas Jefferson Vane, a real liberal, hardcore liberal, bleeding heart, on fire with wanting to animate humanity and liberate humanity and have maximum individual freedom, maximum diversity, maximum choice, maximum tolerance. But that means you don't tell me how to live either. Maximum don't put me in a box. I am a flaming liberal, folks. Flaming. Flaming. I love all the big liberal philosophers. You read them, they sound like hardcore libertarians or, or constitutionalists. That's because our founders were reading all of that, folks, in Latin. They were into all that. They were the flower of the Renaissance. We need to rediscover our birthright. That was never perfectly implemented, but to that point was the greatest idea ever that led to so many other forms of liberation. The problem is then it just gets co-opted when the whites stop using race politics to control things. And then the groups that said, oh, we just want equality, they start using it themselves because it's a good way to take over if you're not actually free market and about free association. Be about skin. Be about what religion you are. Be about what region you are. Be about your sexual preference because then it doesn't have to be about what you're producing, what music, what literature, what art, what you built, the service you did, who you were. See, oh no, they want to be about race or oh, I've got a handlebar mustache and tattoos and wear different color socks. Oh my gosh, the women all want me because I'm a trendy and that's what you do to get women. You don't actually stand for something. You don't actually produce something. You didn't write beautiful literature. You didn't come up with great music. I don't care if you're black or white. I don't care if you're uh, a great guitarist uh, like uh, you know Jimmy Page versus Jimi Hendrix. I can admire them both and they both speak to my soul. I'm not thinking about what color they are when I'm listening to their music. You see, this is the fundamentalness of gang government, Click government, mafia government, monopoly government, crony government, command and control government in society, gang government versus freedom government, which comes from the inside, as Martin Luther King said, the character of someone's deeds, what they stand for, what they produce. Somebody had the best restaurant in town and had the best dish that was your favorite. Would you go there if it was owned by a black person if you were white? Oh, yeah, you'd go there. If you were black and some white person owned a restaurant that had food that was your favorite, would you go there? Yeah, you know you go there. Because what they got is good. What they got, you want. What they produce, what that tree, if a tree had dark green leaves or light green leaves, would you, if you were a light green leaf, would you still like the dark green tree if it produced great fruit? Of course you would. They don't want to make it about what you stand for and what you do and what you produce. They want to make it about what group you're part of. And look, I don't care if you got beards and handlebar mustaches and tattoos all over you and different color socks. I mean, hell, that's what gets you success. Why not? You've learned to go along with it. I don't care about your style. I think it's fine. Everybody's got their own style. I'm not knocking you. I'm not judging you. I know I know a lot of you are listeners. I'm saying that's a that's a crew. That's a gang, folks. There's a gang that wears sports jackets and ties and submarine watches. And if you dress like that, suddenly the establishment listens to you. So I do it too. I put on the monkey outfit because it just makes people listen to what I have to say more. So I'm a big hypocrite. None of us are perfect, but we can aspire to a higher level and a better level is what I'm saying. You know, the big fad is dress up like your Jay-Z and you can go pick the women up because they've got a fantasy they're going to be with Jay-Z. And so even if you're not Jay-Z, but you go out and get a Audi and act like you're Jay-Z, you're going to get all this success because people are living a delusion. Now, it won't last long term because it's fake and it's transitory. You only get empty, dumb people. But that doesn't matter short term to you, does it? Because you're not looking for a long haul real success. You're looking for the image of success. The veneer, not the bona fide. But it will be bona fide. It will be real McCoy. It will be certified, grade A, real deal that will satisfy you in your life, folks. Being real, being truthful, being honorable, not being a coward, the essence of being a man. The very essence of success, being a woman, being beautiful, virtuous, true, strong, daring, 
creative, the essence of being a woman, the essence of your life on this planet, the essence of the great noble species that you're part of, the essence. And then you look at MSNBC, total balkanization, total division, scare the Republicans off from Alex Jones. Oh my gosh, if his talking points ever get picked up by them, they will radicalize the population, take over, and we'll have a new 1776 on our hands, but this time nonviolent, cultural. I mean, they say that in government white papers that are public. We've covered on air. They say in the news, my God, the Republicans are passing laws off what Alex Jones talks about, and they trace them directly back to me and Drudge amplifying it. They go, Alex put it out. Drudge amplified it. It became law. They had hearings on this. And then what happens to your gun control push? Then what happens to your drones? Then what happens to your NSA? Because you know I'm telling the truth. You know I've got you with your pants down. You know I read all the history books. You know, Ed Schultz, you're a big, fat, degenerate, race-baiting scumbag. You punk. You're a big city politicker. I could just see what you talk about when you're drinking, drinking that.